Have you ever thrown a coin or a nail into the water and seen it sinking? But how come large ships made of iron and steel do not sink? Though they are loaded with passengers and goods, it sails smoothly in large oceans. How is this possible? Watch this video till the end to know more about it and also an important technique to improve your swimming skills. The discovery of the scientific principle behind the floating of ships dates back to the 3rd century BC. The story behind the discovery goes like this. A Greek man was taking a bath in a bathtub. It triggered something in his brain when the water overflowed while he immersed himself in it. He found the answer to the question to which he was puzzling over for a long time and started running in the streets shouting Eureka. The man is Archimedes and the principle he discovered was named after him. When an object is immersed fully or partially in a fluid, it displaces fluid equal to the volume of the submerged portion. Archimedes' principle states that an upward force that is exerted on a body immersed in a fluid, whether fully or partially submerged, is equal to the weight of the fluid that the body displaces. The upward force, which is also called buoyancy force, is essential in floating any object over the water. You might have studied about density in school physics. Density is a measure of mass per volume. Pure water has the density of 1000 kg per meter cube. Normally, objects having density less than that of water floats on it. As materials like oil, wood, plastic, etc. are less dense than water, they easily float over water. But how does a ship made of steel float while the nail or coin made of the same steel sink? Steel has density higher than that of water. But when it is used to construct a ship, the newly formed vessel structure's average density gets reduced because of the air that occupies the inner portion of the vessel compartment. When the ship is in water, two forces act upon it. First one is gravitational force due to the ship's own weight and another one is upward buoyancy force equal to the weight of water displaced by the ship. When the buoyancy force is equal or more than that of gravitational force, the ship continues to float. When gravitational force exceeds due to events like inflow of water into the compartment as happened in the case of the Titanic ship, gravitational force exceeds the buoyant force and the ship starts sinking. Same principle is applied in submarines. In submarines, there is a water compartment which is filled with water. The average density of the body is varied by varying the level of water in this compartment. When the submarine is at the surface of the water, the compartment is empty. Water is pumped into the compartment when the submarine has to dive deep into the water. These submarines, used during the First and Second World War, played a major role in deciding the winning side. Surface naval ships and cargo ships were easily attacked by these submarines which couldn't be easily identified by the opponents. Now coming to swimming, our human body is having density more or less equal to that of water. Hence, the upward force will not be sufficient to keep you afloat. You have to make your body spread as much as possible and inhale air to lower your average density. Otherwise, you can also apply Newton's third law by pushing the water downward by your hands and legs. This action creates an equal amount of force in the upward direction which keeps you afloat. But if you are swimming in water with high density like we have in the Dead Sea, you need not worry about all these things. Water is so dense that you can easily float even without a simple effort. Thank you for watching this video. For more such infotainment videos, subscribe to Black Story.